I've actually been living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the past two years. And I can honestly say prior to relocating to Wisconsin, I didn't know what cheese curds and Kringles were prior to moving here. And I probably bought more winter clothes in the past two years than I have in my entire life. But I can not say it's been an amazing experience. So a little bit about myself. I'm an only child. I was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, lived about five minutes away from the LSU campus. And then I relocated, my parents relocated our family to Dallas, Texas when I was in elementary school. My mom has been an educator for over 30 years, supporting students with learning disabilities. My dad has worked in maintenance for over 30 years as well. So I credit my parents for instilling in me the right morals and values and exposing me to diverse experiences which have shaped me into the person I am today. So I'm truly grateful uh, and appreciative. So I consider, by a show of hands, how many people have been fired from their job before? This is safe space. Okay, don't be ashamed, it happens, we're human. How many people have been fired on the first day of a new job? All right. So I consider you all my extended family, do you mind if I share a personal story with you all? Nice. So a defining moment in my career about eight years ago, one of my classmates in my MBA program at Texas Southern University, huge shout out to all of his story, black colleges and universities. She shared an HR job opportunity with me and a several interviews later, I got the job. I started my first day, I attended New High Orientation, that included meeting directly with the board of directors who were all white men, all white old men, asking new hires different questions, were able to connect, and there you have me in my nice suit, my tie, being my true authentic self, being positive, you know, super excited for a new opportunity to be in a new environment. So following new high orientation, got a more in-depth tour of the facility, met some more people across the organization. I started my first day. About six hours into my work shift, the head of HR approaches me and says, I'm gonna have to fire you. I'm thinking, whoa, it's a joke, right? But I seen that she was serious because I can see the tears in her eyes. And I just asked her, I'm like, I mean, why am I being fired? This is literally my first day. And she looks at me and she says, the, the CEO just doesn't like your vibe. I'm extremely sorry. So it took me a moment to really digest what happened in that moment. I gathered my belongings. I went to my car. I cried in my car for about five minutes, really just replaying the situation in my head, thinking about, you know, what did I do wrong? You know, why me? But it eventually, you know, I shifted to the to look at the positive of the situation and figure out, okay, how can I use this situation in order to elevate and do greater things? So fast forward eight years later, I've been able to do great things in my career, including winning an NBA World Championship in 2021. Shout out to the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> Go Bucks. I was recently recognized as one of the most influential black leaders in Wisconsin in 2022. So it, it's a true testament to show you that, you know, my vibe was appreciated. You know, I didn't allow that one situation to determine who I am as a person, determine what I bring to the table, my value, but keeping at the forefront that life's a roller coaster. You're gonna go through many emotions, many ups and downs, but you have to brace yourself. You have to stay buckled up. You have to stay buckled up and, and persevere and embrace your journey. So fast forward, let's take it back. Let, let's take it back to 2020, the peak of the pandemic during COVID where we were all sitting at home, binge watching our favorite shows, eating our favorite snacks, me personally, fruit snacks. And then boom, we're staying up to date 
Every day what's going on in the news, we witnessed the tragic death of George Floyd. And immediately our society took a major shift and prompted people to self-reflect and schools and companies to take a more in-depth look at how they operate. But for me, I've always known my purpose. My purpose to make a positive impact, help other people, work on things that's gonna be able to push our society forward. So on the left, you see me as a young man. I won the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. oratorical contest in elementary school. And then on the right, you see me working closely with Martin Luther King III, helping register people to vote. So there's many layers of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. According to Indeed, jobs in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging rose 123% in 2020. So a lot of companies' immediate focus was to how can I work, how can I make my workforce more diverse and inclusive? Some companies hired DEIB professionals with no true intent to carry out initiatives long term. But I can say a lot of good did come from 2020. We made significant changes, but we have a lot of work to do. And we can't do it alone. We can't, no one in this room, we can't do it alone. It must take each of us to do our parts. It's gonna take a village in order to make sure that the world we live in is a better place, not only for now, but for future generations to come. And I truly believe the most important element is having a sense of belonging, creating spaces for people to have a sense of belonging. You may not think so, but I, I think you have the power to make sure the people around you and the people that you connect with daily feel seen, feel heard, feel valued. Because think about it. Think about times where you were in a space or spaces and you didn't have a sense of belonging. You felt like you didn't belong. A sense of belonging is the key to our life satisfaction, our happiness, our physical and mental health. Because really, peace is the, the new success. You know, we have this one life to live. Why not be happy, right? Peace is the new success. Shout out to Sherry Riley. And all of our sense of belonging is different. Or some of it may be the same. But for me, having a sense of belonging is being my true authentic self, having fun, being respected, feeling valued and appreciated. And making sure that I'm in spaces where my voice is being heard. And how do we do that? Ooh, change. I know we hate seeing the word change. Change is difficult. Change is challenging as hell. But we must do it in order to make things better. And as an HR professional, the new norm is looking more closely at different policies and processes, being able to update those and shift from an old way of thinking. You know, how do we recruit? How do we interview? How do we hire? How do we promote? You know, being able to look at the raw data of demographics at your current institution or employer and seeing how you can leverage opportunities to increase representation. Looking at making sure that you have a diverse leadership team and it doesn't look like that organization that fired me on the first day. I didn't see anyone that looked like myself. I didn't see a diverse leadership team. I didn't feel like that was a place where I had a sense of belonging. And Textio, I don't know if you all heard of Textio, but it's a tool that I use every day, which I think is, a, is an amazing resource of eliminating biases and job descriptions. Think about a time where you were on your phone or you were at, at your desktop and you were looking at an opportunity and you got discouraged by just looking at a job description. 
it's super critical of a content of a job description because there may be information that people in different groups are being discriminated against and discouraging them from applying for opportunities. So you want to make sure that those job descriptions have inclusive information and people feel confident and comfortable to apply for opportunities, even if they may not have all of the skills, but they feel very comfortable in applying. A more focus on pay equity, a more focus on continuously educating and developing people to grow, more of a, a focus on consistently keeping employees engaged, more of a focus on people's mental health, actually putting people first and not the business first. And studies show when you put people first, the more successful your business is going to be. A more of a focus on being able to provide people the platform and resources to execute initiatives that they're passionate about in the community. Studies show that 80% of job seekers ages 18 to 34 say that companies who are committed to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging is very important to them. So we must create environments where everyone feels included and supported, especially women, people of color, people with disabilities, people of the LGBTQ plus communities, and veterans. And when you think about community, there is a corporate social responsibility, also known as CSR. How a company gives back to the community positively impacts the environment and acts of greater good, not only for greater profits, which is super critical. It's critical because it's not just a public respect, but it's tied into internal employee satisfaction and happiness. That's what you want. And when you take all of those things, that's the culture. The culture is what's going to not only attract, but retain diverse talent. And it truly has to be in your heart to genuinely embrace people that may not look like you, may not have the same upbringing as you, may have a totally different background to you, but you have to embrace those people and that's what's gonna push our society forward. And when people think about it, you know, all of this strategizing, it is a strategy, but it's a simple formula. Be a good person and have empathy. And always remember that it's a roller coaster, but you have to stay buckled up and embrace the journey. Thank you all for coming to my TED Talk.